In today's video, we're going to be talking about generative AI and why you shouldn't be using it. Let's jump in. Welcome to another video. So today you join me at Venford Falls on Dartmoor National Park and we're here today to take some photos of the waterfall and I want to talk about generative AI. Now, there's a lot of videos on this on the internet at the moment, um, people showing you how to use it but I just wanted to talk about uh, some of the things I think it can be used for and give you some examples. Now I hear a lot of photographers talking about how AI is the end of photography as we know it and all that sort of stuff. But me personally, I think there's a kind of an element of truth to that where commercial photography, where say a magazine uh, would want a car in a desert, for example, um, it's gonna be a lot cheaper for them to, to generate that with AI. So that side of photography may be a little bit dead, but for people like us, I think it's, it can only make your photography better and it's gonna make things a lot easier. But there is a caveat to that you really don't want to be relying on AI in your photography. And I will show you why in a second as we're gonna go up the waterfalls. So I have actually been here um, in another video uh, shot, I did a waterfall shot, but my microphone was a bit dodgy and it, the sound was absolutely horrendous. Now I've got these new DJI mics, but I say no, I've had them for a little bit now, and I think they actually do quite a decent job of um, isolating that sound. Let me know if they don't, well, don't let me know because I'll see in the edit. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to stop here just before the waterfall, and the actual waterfall is just on the top of here, so I'm going to grab an image here. When I was here last time, there was no light. I come, I'd come at the end of the day and um, it was more of a location scout because I'd heard of the place and now I've got a bit of light coming through. It's not, it's not the greatest. I think it'll probably be a little bit better at midday and it's now uh, 10 to 11. So another hour or so and I think we're going to get some better light down here. But for now, it, it will do. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up my shot here and I will talk you through the composition and then we shall go up to the actual waterfall. Okay, so I'm just going to set up here for the first shot. Uh, I'm just going to tell you quickly, absolutely beautiful uh, stream coming down. This is the River Dart actually. And the top here, I'm trying not to get my finger too much in it because it loses focus. But this top bit here, I actually really like this bit. It almost looks like a uh, rockery, like the sort of stuff you would see in someone's garden. And then juxtaposed with this rapid uh, flowing water, I think it absolutely looks really, really stunning because the light, the way the light's shining on it at the moment, uh, when I came out here last time, I don't know if I said, but when I came out here last time, there was no light at all. So to see some light on it actually looks really good. The tree, I might keep that in. It could be a good leading line and some ferns which I, I might remove the ferns and see how that looks. And same as down here, I might get these in and remove these uh, later on. But yeah, definitely this water. I might have a go at slowing it down, uh, not too much, but just enough to um, give it a bit of drama in the image. Uh, cut the top off here, uh, here, here, somewhere. Not too much uh, foliage in the background because I just don't think that will add to the image. I think it will probably just distract from it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the generative fill to remove a lot of the things in the scene that I find distracting. Now I'll pop up the images up either side 
and you can have a look at how well the generative fill does. I'm not gonna go through the process, I think I said in the beginning of this video, I'm not gonna go through the process of explaining how it works. Unless you want that, let me know in the comments if you want a video explaining how it works on, and how to use it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate an image that's artificial, AI created, and I hopefully it's gonna improve the actual image that I've created. So it's gonna be an improvement of this image. Let me know in the comments what you think, whether you think it works well, whether, whether you think it's just too fake, um, or whether you don't like it or do like it, let me know, uh, be interested to know. I'm gonna move the camera, I'm gonna just take a, a closer shot of this waterfall now, and then we're gonna move up to the actual waterfall, and then that's where I'm gonna show you why you shouldn't be using generative fill. Okay, settings for this shot are one second exposure, so I can slow the water down a little bit, not too much. F13, ISO 100, I've got a polarizer on just to take the glare off the rocks and a little bit out of the water. And I'm also shooting with the 24 to 105 at 40 mil. I'll pop the image up on the screen now. Let me know what you think in the comments. So generative fill is going to make your photoshopping a thousand times better. I guarantee it's going to improve your images. And it's made it accessible for people like me that I'm not a professional Photoshop expert. I don't, I don't edit photos that much. I do the basics and I get on. Now, what I can do, I do clone stamp tools. It's probably my biggest thing. But now I can do things like what I've showed you in the previous image, removing things, but not just removing them, Whereas before I'd spend three or four hours removing something, this is done in click of a button. Type a couple of words in, done. So it will improve. It will improve your uh, photography 100%. And not only that, it's gonna speed up your process. So it's gonna save you time, which time is really precious. If you spend two or three hours editing one photo sometimes, it's a fly on the lens. Get off, get off. If you spend two or three hours editing, editing just a single photo, imagine how much more you can get done by just clicking a button and then editing 10 photos in half that time. Not even half that time, it is literally that fast. So let me know what you think in the comments of these images. I'm gonna pop, I'll show you the composition now quickly. I'll pop the edited AI version up on the screen as well. And you can let me know what you think of the two. So for the composition, we've got the water coming from the right hand side with the rock on the left as a foreground element and then that's going to take your eye, the water will take your eye up through the frame and out of the top of the picture. F13, six of a second and ISO 100 using the 24 to 105 at 70 millimeters and also with the polarizer on just to take that glare off the water and the rocks as well. I'll pop that image up on the screen and I'll pop the AI image next to it. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. second location uh, absolutely beautiful location we've completely surrounded by rocks 
and look how green and vibrant that looks with the moss all the way around and then topped off by the water, twin waterfalls and a pebble bed a stone pebble bed to be fair I've been here like I said been here last time and there's only so many times you can kind of shoot the same sort of scenes now uh, the last time I was here there was no light because I had no um, there was a uh, there was a group of people bathing in the water here and it's not the water's not deep enough now to do that um, and I had to wait until sunset to get the image that I want now so I had no light on the on the um, scene at all now however I've got some beautiful light coming down uh, directly above because it's midday just gone midday 12:45. And it's shining just at the bottom of the waterfall and just a little bit of the waterfall as well. So we are going to be getting a little bit of light in the right places, I think. Just coming down here looks absolutely uh, beautiful, the way that uh, light is just reflecting off that. We'll take a polarizer to reduce that glare, though. And, uh, yeah, let's get that shot set up before we lose that light above because it won't take long before it will be in shadow again. Right, so before we talk about our second composition, let's talk about why you shouldn't be using AI if you're starting out in photography. Now, the reason that I think that it's a good idea to stay away from it just for the, the starting of your photography journey would be because you can start to use AI as a crutch and it will inhibit your learning as a photographer. So as you turn up to a scene like this, you're gonna see these two waterfalls and this tree branch sat right through the middle of your frame and it's easy to go from where you are take the shot ai this tree branch out i mean if you think it detracts from the image obviously ai this tree branch out and i've done with it and move on but what you're losing there if you do that you're losing a learning lesson oh, yeah you're, lo you're losing a lesson in photography a learning lesson is probably the same thing you're losing a lesson in photography that you wouldn't get by using AI. Now, if you can't use AI to get rid of this branch, what's your next choice? Change focal lengths on your lens? Is it change your composition, move around? Is it to get lower, to get higher? You're gonna, you're gonna start thinking about all those different things that you use, and those are the tools that we use as photographers to get a better image. And if you're just turning up to a scene and removing it with AI, you're not gonna develop those tools. So. At the start of your photography journey, I would 100% suggest try and avoid using AI as much, I'm not saying don't use it, but I'm saying as much, and learn those skills first of moving around things. If there's something in the frame that you don't like, maybe zoom in a little bit, and try and hone those skills before you start using AI and editing your photos in a, in a more extreme way. Okay, so before I take this final composition, I'll pop back there and just take the one to show you the difference between removing this log in uh, generative fill and having it in the shot. And let me know what you think. Uh, see whether you like it in the shot or without the log in the shot. And did AI do a good job of, of removing it? We'll find out. So final composition, we've got this furthest away waterfall, almost center of the frame, and then this one off to the right, just to give it a little bit of uh, depth to the scene, just so I'm not straight on to both of them. That way we've got um, a bit more interest. I'm using the rock to the right, this, this rock here, just to frame the image, and obviously using the rocks at the back, um, just to frame it from the other side. Again, cutting off the top of the sky, 
and I'm using the uh, polarizer as well to break off some of that light. Settings wise, we've got uh, ISO 100, F13, six of a second, and our um, focal length is right down at 24 millimeters for this one. So I'm getting nice and close and then zooming out with the, using the maximum uh, width of my lens. So that's the settings for this shot. So I will take that photo and I will pop that up on the screen. So generative fill definitely has its place in photography and it's only going to get better and better as time goes on. Now, as with all technology, it has a tendency to make us lazy. Mobile phones uh, will make us lazy. We, we used to have so many more skills and we just rely on technology now to do things for us. And that's the same with this. It's going to make you, it, it has the potential to make you a little bit lazier with photography because things are easier, but that's the same again with auto ISO settings like that. The camera's technology, the, ca the technology in the camera is there to make your uh, experience a lot easier. So it's just learn photography, learn your compositions, learn your um, settings before using all these automated things and you will definitely be a better photographer for it. Right, that's me done for another video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. And uh, if you haven't liked this video and you did enjoy it, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It really does help. And I really do appreciate that. And if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, then please do consider clicking that subscribe button. Get notified of the new videos as they come out. And uh, yeah, let me know which was your favorite uh, images. Which did you prefer? Did you prefer the AI ones or the, the natural ones? Uh, let me know in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one.